Hi, my name is Patrick Tissigem. I'm a managing partner at UTU, a company based in Brussels, Belgium. And in this session, I'm going to explain and illustrate how you can create a custom search page and custom tabs in the search center in a collaboration portal delivered with the Microsoft Office SharePoint server. Before I show you what your options are in the search center, let me explain briefly what I have done here at the level of the shared service provider to prepare my demo. First of all, in the search settings, what we have is one content source that is defined and we have done a full crawl so our index file is ready to go and we also have a number of search scopes and they have all been updated and one is going to be used later on in the demo it's called MSDN content over here in the collaboration portal users have the option to make use of the search box here at the top of the page to enter one or more keywords and then have SharePoint execute the query and show the results here in the search results page. That's one option. The other option that users have is to go directly to a dedicated place called the search center. And basically you have two types of search centers. One is the one that you see over here. This is the search center with tabs. And this search center requires the publishing features to be turned on within your site collection and a collaboration portal has these features activated by default. A second type of search center is the search center light. And that is one where we don't have tabs and um, there are less customization possibilities, but the search center light doesn't require you to have the publishing features activated. So that is a possible version of the search center you can add to a site collection consisting out of team sites. I will focus on the search center with tabs. And out of the box, you have two tabs that are available. One is called All Sites, and a second one is called People. And each of these tabs are associated with a page that is based on a specific page layout. When I enter a keyword, for example, Business, and I let SharePoint execute the query, I will end up in a results page. And again, this page is based on a certain page layout. Going to the advanced search page, again, brings me to a new type of page based on a specific page layout. So why is this important? Well, if you decide to create your own tabs here in the search center, you have the option to associate your custom tabs with pages that are already available, or you can also decide to create your own search page. That's what I'm going to do here by selecting site actions, and then create page. Now over here, I can type in a title for my page. And I'm going to select one of the page layouts. And for the first type of page, I'm going to go for the search page page layout. That one contains the search box web part that I can further customize. But for now, I'm just going to publish this page. I'll do the customization later on. Secondly, I will also have my own search results page. So again, I'm going via site actions to the create page and I'll type in a title again, search results. And now I'm going to go for the last page layout in this list here called the search results page page layout. That one contains a whole set of web parts that are responsible for displaying the search results to the user. And again, I can customize each of them, but for now, I'm simply going to publish the page. So now I'm ready to create my custom tab. And a tab is actually represented as an item in a list. And we have two lists where we store the tabs that our users are going to see. Depending on the type of page, SharePoint will retrieve the tab out of either the tabs in search pages list or the second one, the tabs in search results. So if I want, I can go here to the first list and I can create a tab called MSDN. I will let it point to the MSDN search dot speaks. Press OK. And if I want that my tab also appears in the search results pages, then I have to do the same thing in the second list. So the same name and then pointing to the same msdnsearch.aspeaks. 
So that means now, if I go to the Search Center, that I have my MSDN tab. If I click on it, I end up, as you can see here in the address bar, to the MSDN searches.aspeaks. But at this moment, when I type in a keyword, and I let SharePoint execute the query, I will still end up in the results.aspeaks. So not yet in the custom search results page that I created before. So we have to do an additional configuration. Before that, remember in the beginning when I showed you the shared service provider and the administration side, I talked about this search scope called MSDN content. The goal of my customization is also to display over here in the MSDN tab and our own MSDN search.a speaks a scope picker that is going to display this search scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the site collection administration and over here in the search scopes I'm going to make sure that I have a new display group. I'll call it MSDN. And this display group is going to display only the MSDN content search scope. So I'll save this one and let's not forget the name MSDN as the name of the display group. So then we are ready to go and customize the MSDN search.a speaks. So the customization is done at the level of the search box. So I can go to the properties of my search box. We don't have a lot of room here, but first of all, we have a category called scopes dropdown. And by default, the search page is not displaying the scope picker. So I'm going to make sure that we have a scope picker that will show our custom search scope. And um, we will not include any contextual scopes. And then next, we have uh, other configurations that we can do. But for this demo here, I'm only going to expand miscellaneous. And then over here, we have the possibility to tell the search box to navigate to our own custom search results page, MSDN search results .a speaks. And we can also tell the search box box to display the scope picker and associate that scope picker not with the default search dropdown display group, but with the MSDN display group. So when I apply all of the changes and I publish my page, what you will see is that in our search center, when we click on the MSDN tab, we now have a scope picker showing only the MSDN content search scope. And I can enter a keyword, for example, business, execute the query, and I will end up only in my MSDN search results.a speak, so my own custom search results page. And I get to see only the search results that are part of the MSDN content search scope. A final piece of the demonstration here will be the customization of the search results page. So if I edit this page, you see here a whole set of web parts. Together, they bring the search results to the user. So we have web parts that are displaying the search statistics, some of the actions users can do, we have a web part for displaying the best bets for the paging. The most important one is the one that is called the search core results web part. And this web part is receiving from the search engine after the execution of the query, the results in XML format and is going to apply a transformation. So an XSLT transformation on top of this XML so that you get to see the HTML over here in the body of your web part. The good thing about this is that this XSLT is exposed and you can change it or you can completely replace it with your own custom XSLT. So if I modify the properties of this web part, there are a whole set of properties that you can change and we don't have the time to go into them one by one. But over here in this data view properties section, we have the big button that allows us to have a peek at the XSLT that is responsible for the body of the web part showing the list of search results. 
So there are many things you can do here in this XSLT. There are some customizations you can do, but as I said, you can replace it with your own custom XSLT. So what I'm going to demonstrate is how you can make use of the Microsoft Office SharePoint Designer and the Data View Web Parts to come up with your own custom XSLT to display the search results in a different way than what you get out of the box. So to start with, I'm going to replace all of this XSLT with a small snippet of XSLT that is simply going to ask the search core results web part to output the XML that it is getting from the search engine. So we will have the raw output of the search results. Let me save this and click OK to apply the changes. Let's publish the page. And looking here in the browser, you see that you get the XML and every item in the results is represented by a result node. What we can do now is we can isolate all of this XML in its own physical file just by going to view source and copy and pasting the XML and use all of that as the sample data for our data view web part here in the SharePoint Designer. So I've connected already to the site. I've created an ASP.NET page that I'm going to use to create my data view web part. And then I can go here into the data view, select manage data source, and then I can upload my XML file into the site. I do this by this small dialog, connect to my desktop. Here's the XML file. I'll simply load it into the site so that I can use it and I can have a look at the data that is available within that XML file. So there are different nodes selected already. Now I'm going to make it simple for this demo. So I'm going to select the title. I'm going to select the author. And let's also select the, the creation date. And maybe uh, one more thing. Over here, I can go for the image URL. So those are the selected nodes. I'm going to just drag and drop that on top of my ASP.NET page. And what you will see here is that the data view web part is immediately rendered. And the data view web part takes all of the XML and applies an out of the box XSLT on top of it. The data view web part has powerful and rich designer options so that you can make changes to the XSLT without even touching the XSLT itself. So here in the common data view tasks, you have the option to edit the columns, add more columns, remove columns. You have the option to start find your paging. There is uh, the possibility to, for example, do some grouping, sort on a specific column. What I'm going to do is I'm going just to change the layout and go to, for example, this uh, HTML view. So this is another view on our data. And there are many, many things we can do to finish it off. For example, what I can do here is change the result make sure that we have a picture so that we can see what type of documents or what type of search result we have. This is the title of our search result. I'm going to make it clickable. So I'll format it as a hyperlink. Then I end up in this edit hyperlink dialog where I specify the address. It's going to be URL, which is another field in our XML. Let's change this back to title. Press OK. Now people can click on the result. And let's say that maybe the right, the creation date, let's change that also. Let's format this as a date time. We're not going to show the time. And maybe we want to have it displayed like this. So you have changed a lot of XSLT, but you really didn't go into the XSLT itself. So if you're happy with all of this, what you can do now is put the uh, SharePoint Designer in split mode. And what I'm going to do is just uh, steal the XSLT that the data view web part has created. So here on page 29, we see the start of the XSLT. I will just go and scroll down until I come to the end node of the XSL style sheet. And I will just copy this so that I can reuse it in my search core results web part. Let's go back over here. Let's make sure that we can edit the page. 
what you will see now is that the search core results web part has a small problem because we cannot edit the, uh, the properties anymore. So let's just remove the core web part from the page itself. Let's go to contents is equal one. Go to the web part maintenance page. Here's the search core results. Let's leave it. But we're going to immediately edit so that we have the possibility to make sure that our XSLT and our search results are being applied. I'm going to edit page. And I'm going to add a web part again. And this time I'm going to select search core results. Press add. Make sure that we have everything nicely organized. And let's publish the page. So now we have the default web part again on our page. If I make a search for business, you, know, you will see the normal XSLT has been used for displaying our search results. So all OK, but I have my own XSLT. So I'm going to edit the page again. And now I'm going to edit the properties of the search core results web part. I'll make use of the button here. I'll just uh, replace this XSLT with the following XSLT. That's the XSLT as it was generated by the data view web part in our SharePoint designer. So saving this, pressing OK, and then just publishing the page gives me a new look for my search results a look that I have defined in the SharePoint Designer. So with that, um, I am going to conclude this session. I hope you enjoyed it. I've showed you how you can customize the Search Center, create new tabs, create new pages, and also showed you kind of how you can quickly come up with custom XSLT that can replace the XSLT that is used by the Search Core Results web part in the Search Center. Thank you very much.